In this video, I want to go behind the scenes of Searching for Sara, which is the latest release from Casefile Presents. On this series, I done the post-production as well as music. Searching for Sara is available now for free only on Spotify, so go and check it out. There'll be links in the description below. Hi, it's Mike from Casefile and Casefile Presents. On this channel, I'm releasing videos on podcasting. If you enjoy the content, please hit the like button. The case has been suggested to us through submit a case option on Casefile website. It was about the disappearance of Sarah McDermott, who vanished from Kananuk railway station on 11th of July 1990. Now, Wikipedraitis, who's a true crime author that works with Casefile and Casefile Presents, has just finished her work on the Vanishing of Vivian Cameron podcast that we released last year, so check it out if you hadn't. And we thought, who's better to tackle this case than Vicky? And on top of that, in her book, The Frankston Murders, she, the, the book was about serial killer Paul Dania, but she also touched upon and, and wrote about the disappearance of Sarah McDermott as well as other unsolved murder that happened around in the same time. That's how the idea for Searching for Sarah podcast was born. The family, Sarah's family was on board as well as the original investigators. So Vicky got to work. Vicky Petraitis recorded a lot of people that were connected to the case. It was around 50 in total. So a lot of interviews, uh, some of them recorded in person, some of them over the phone, some of them over the internet a lot of audio of varied quality. But all of it was transcribed and that made it easier for us to do the initial editing, the editing of the narrative. On top of that, it was her uh, second podcast after the vanishing of Vivian Cameron. So the process was better organized, much smoother. Still, it was a lot of work. Unfortunately, the lockdowns that were happening in Australia, in Melbourne at that time, meant that she couldn't interview everyone in person. That's why we had to use other means like the internet or the phone. Vicky's niece, Beck, uh, did the first edit, getting rid of the mistakes and also putting it all into a narrative according to scripts. So my role was only in post-production. I didn't have to deal with all that editing, so I know, a bit cheeky. But uh, yeah, there was a lot of audio that Vicky put together in a session and then exported to me on single tracks for each dialogue, for each person, with uh, bounds to the length of the episode. So what I had to do was just import it into prose. It was all in the right place and then I could start my work. So yeah, like I said, it was a lot of interviews. I mapped it all in Google Sheets so I knew in what episode uh, which person appears and that helped me when I had to import the settings for each person. And then, of course, I used my usual isotope tools uh, when it came to, you know, cleanups and edits. I wrote several music cues for the series and I've also made a different versions of each cue. So I had uh, classic, drama, guitar and pad version of each cue and that also gave me the option to keep the musical bed varied. Uh, I had a lot of different textures to play with. As far as the uh, VSTs goes, Ago, I used um, stuff from Spectrasonics, Native Instruments, libraries from Spitfire, as well as Addictive Drummer from XLN. And uh, when scoring to the episode, to the narration, to the narrative, then I was, you know, mixing different instruments, mixing different textures. Then for the main theme, I took a bit of one of the music cues that I wrote and then I build the uh, main theme from scratch so it fit that 30 second short intro and ultra theme. With the mix, yeah, it was a tough job because like I said, there was a lot of different tracks, different interviews of different quality. 
and on top of that, whenever I change the global settings, that is settings of a, on a mix bus or a master track, then I had to update uh, all episodes to the same settings. I use my usual tools from Isotope for mixing, but I had some few uh, new additions as well. One was uh, Fresh Air from Slate, and I put it on the master track, and it's an amazing plugin because it added that presence to somewhat dark audio, and it was free. It was a free plugin from Slate, so amazing. And the problem I had, especially with that sort of dark sound, was on the narration on Vicky. And I think that was uh, due to the particular microphone that she recorded on, but we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit later in the video. I also used Oxford Inflator on the mix bus, and that pushed the volumes, made everything a little bit more, you know, like meaty, the whole, <laughs> the whole mix. The biggest change, however, was that before I mixed the final version of the show, I got a new audio interface, and that's Universal Audio Apollo X Twin. And of course, with UA uh, interfaces come their plugins. And it was late at that point, but still, I added their uh, Little Labs Voice of God on a stereo mix bus to give the whole episode, the whole sound, a bit of bass resonance. So that's a bit risky, not a lot of people use it for uh, mix bus. And then I also used Oxide, uh, I think it was on a mix bus as well, which gives it sort of like this tape vintage uh, rounded feel to the sound as well. I did have a huge problem with uh, delay compensation, which was caused by Isotope D-Reverb plugins. Thankfully, I was able to fix it near the deadline. But uh, yeah, I made another video just on that, so that will be out soon, hopefully. We had four drafts in total, and throughout the process I was getting QC notes from Anthony, Case Fellow Host, as well as Vicky. So there was a few pickups and re-records as well. It was pretty straightforward. Um, I had to stay on top of all the changes, of course. At that time I was still using Google Docs to track these QC notes, but near the end of the process I created a template in Google Sheets, and from now on I will be using uh, this table because it will be easier to track the notes and what's fixed and what's to be fixed uh, on future projects. As usual, Paulina took care of designs, so she created the artwork, the thumbnails, the website, all of it. We actually did have the artwork for the show as we announced it, I think it was late last year, but the, the artwork was changed, Paulina changed it, but the same color space remained, sort of blue colors. Spotify organized the release and we worked uh, together on a video and audio trailer. So Paulina, she put together the video trailer. Amazing job, she's done it from a uh, stock footage. If you haven't seen it, check it out. As, and for audio, Vicky, Case Fellow Host, Anthony and I, we sort of put together the clips. So they worked uh, for the trailer and then I done original music for the trailer as well. Then we, of course, run the trailers and the ads on Casefellow feed for a few weeks. Searching for Sarah was an amazing project and it did came together in the end. Mix-wise, edit-wise, yeah, it was a tough job, but we all like a challenge. With writing music, I was able to utilize new libraries new VSTs, um, which was fun. However, for next project, I'll stay on top of, sort of tracking what cue went where. And for this one, I was freestyling a little bit. That was fun as well. You know, the risky moves I took was with adding new plugins so late in the process. Ideally, you wanna work 
with all your tools from the beginning so you can keep adjusting and see what works, what doesn't. But uh, ultimately I felt that Oxide and Voice of God worked well and added to the series. But yeah, it was a risk that I that I did take at the, in the end. Vicky recorded her narration in the studio on Audio Technica 80 2020. And it's a, her second podcast that she narrated uh, with this particular setup. And it's a fine microphone, I'm not saying it's not, but I don't think it works particularly well on her voice. I think it lacks a little bit of presence. So our plan moving forward is that for the next project we'll get Neumann TLM 103 and then she can take that microphone to the studio with her and I think that will work amazing on her voice but we'll see with the next one. The biggest issue I had on this project was with delay compensation in Pro Tools. Now when I was working like draft one and draft two I sort of half fixed it. It wasn't really fixed, it was fixed a little bit. And the issue was on four episodes, I think, out of nine. But it only became super apparent when I've added these new plugins, Oxide and Voice of God, and then I could really hear it. Like the sound was just doubling and I didn't know what it was because it was the first time I had a problem with it. After searching online and on different forums, it became clear that, yeah, it was delayed compensation. Then I went into settings. I am sort of made it so I can see. In the end, I was able to fix that issue for the final uh, draft. But yeah, that was stressful. Luckily, I did find the solution for it. But it's just one of these things that you don't think about because, like I said, I never had a problem with it before, especially when doing work on podcast so yeah we've gotta we gotta keep on our toes but uh, yeah thanks for watching i hope the video was interesting searching for sarah is out now you can listen to the whole series for free on spotify so please check it out if you enjoyed this video we can check the rest of my channel for now please share like and subscribe i'll see you later